Welcome to another episode of Biz in the 916. I'm Kristen Berkery, and I've been a marketing, advertising, and technology professional for 25 years. We're recording here in the 916. That's Sacramento, California, for those of you listening elsewhere. Sacramento is the capital of the world's fifth largest economy, and it's also on the top 10 list of most diverse large cities in the country, ahead of even Los Angeles and Miami. I really enjoy speaking to groups about empowering women in the workplace. I met today's guest when I spoke at a workshop in Roseville, California, and talked about how an overwhelming number of studies show that giving women more leadership opportunities creates a better work environment and generates more profits. My guest, Preet Alawalia, has a remarkable story. After an apprenticeship at a hedge fund during college, she started a private investment company with her brother, and now they advise business owners who want to make smart investments in commercial real estate. Preet is also active in organizations that support women entrepreneurs. Thank you for joining me today, Preet. Thank you for having me, Kristen. It's a pleasure to be talking to you and, and to your listeners. Tell me about your investment business. So our firm, GNP Capital Partners, is a boutique investment firm, and we specialize in providing bridge loans or short-term loans for commercial real estate, uh, in addition to alternative investment opportunities. Um, so going back to how it all started, after completing our apprenticeship, my brother and I focused on bridge lending, and we built some great relationships, and by fostering those relationships for the past few years now, um, we've had the opportunity to present some privileged investment opportunities to our clients. And what I mean by privileged investments are things like commercial real estate and venture capital, where you are investing alongside family offices and other institutions who are focused on creating generational wealth. These are opportunities that we carefully handpick while monitoring the current markets. Um, so people might ask why alternative investments and why provide these opportunities to our clients or what's so special about um, the investments that we're making. So the honest and simple answer is that personally, we have seen many people get fleeced when making investments, whether it be family, friends, and everything usually looks great on paper until things start to go bad and then there's no one there to help you fix it. Seeing so many situations like this uh, led us to expand into offering uh, these types of deals. And we want to provide our clients the resources and the know-how to leverage our experience and work and make great investments. Because ultimately, they are leaving a legacy for their kids and grandkids. And to have the proper resources and knowledge is essential to do that. So we see this as a way to preserve and grow your wealth. Uh, we get approached by a lot of people who express interest in investing, and they ask us, how do we do it? We follow three rules. First, we invest in deals where there, there is an audited track record. The numbers have to make sense, and past performance has to corroborate that. Those are the people we work with. Second, we look for experience. The people putting together the deal need to have gone through at least two cycles. And third is skin in the game. We like to see at least 10% hard equity in these deals. Um, can you explain what is a bridge loan? So a bridge loan is a short-term loan, anywhere from a couple months to two to three years. That's typically how long we make them. And it's for those individuals where they can't, where the asset doesn't qualify or the sponsor uh, for some reason cannot get a bank loan. So that's where we would come in and give them that short-term loan um, where they are planning to do something with the property. It's, it's distressed, it's value add, and they have that short-term loan to do what they need to do, and then they will either refinance into a more permanent loan, or sometimes they sell the property. How did you and your brother decide to start GNP Capital Partners? Um, after completing my bachelor's and graduating from UC Davis, I decided to take a year off and study for the LSAT, which is the entrance exam for law school. At the same time, my brother was completing his last year at UC Davis, and he actually came across this apprenticeship program with a New York hedge fund. And uh, we, we decided, hey, let's try it. Um, let's explore our options and see where it goes. So we really enjoyed working with them, and we learned a lot. And it was around this time where we started thinking about how are we going to pay for graduate school. I was pre-law. He was pre-med. So... We started thinking about that, and uh, like most people, it would have been student loans. 
And sharing about a million dollars in student loans between the two of us really didn't seem like a good idea. Um, so we had these conversations multiple times with each other and with my father. And ultimately, my father was the one who gave us the nudge and cur- encouraged us to proceed with starting our own firm. We had the support of our parents. And ever since we started this, it's been great. It's been a, it's, it's truly been a ride. Uh, we, we've learned a lot. And um, my dad has been investing in real estate for quite some time. And he's gone through the cycles. And he's learned the hard way as well. And we've learned a lot from him. So we've been drawn to this and interested in real estate investing at at an early age. We used to go and and look at properties with him and be in the room when he spoke with management companies and put his deals together. Uh, so, So we got to listen to him do a little bit of this. And that apprenticeship just opened a lot more avenues for us. Your dad has been a big influence on you both personally and professionally. What are some of the most important things he taught you? So yeah, as as we talked about earlier, he's been a great influence on us and one of the reasons why we started this business. As far back as I can remember, he supported us in everything and I think sometimes we don't give him um, enough credit. Ever since I can remember, he encouraged me to try whatever I wanted. So whether it was playing tennis, um, learning karate, you know, my brother wanted to do that and he told me, he's like, learn, right? You should know how to protect yourself. It'll be a good experience for you. So I was never held back in any way, you know, whether he was a boy, I was a girl, anything like that. He was very encouraging in all aspects. And he just said, you know, try it. You can do it. See where it takes you. Um, So he's a very positive person um, in that sense. And I think I, I I take a lot from that. You know, we were having a conversation last night about a deal we were working on and um, his positivity really, really helped. And it was just that extra push we needed to, okay, this is kind of the route we need to take with this. That's the reason I am sitting here talking with you today is, is his (laughs) encouragement. And, you know, on a more personal note, this past year, I went through some things personally, and I had to make some really tough decisions. They were divisive decisions, I feel. Um, And through that, my whole family, my father, they were very supportive of it. And after everything played out, um, I also want to credit, you know, I had a great group of close friends, as well as community members who were very supportive. That's also part of the reason why I'm doing what I am doing today is is from that support. My father has had a lot of different experiences. He was born in Africa and he grew up in Uganda. And he was 10 years old when um, they had a coup. And they had to leave overnight, leaving everything there. And they, they moved to India at that time. Um, So from a very young age, he moved a lot of different countries. From India, they went to England. Um, From England, they came to Canada. And in Canada, he he ended up applying to the University of Montana here in the United States uh, for pharmacy school. And going back and listening to all his experiences of traveling the different countries and how at a young age, you know, he had different experiences in school. Uh, So from India going to England and Canada, they did face a lot of uh, discrimination because they they looked different. Ultimately, they were different. So just listening to his experiences, you know, when he came to Canada, he was the oldest of two, two other brothers, and he had to work a lot of different jobs, you know. So his father was a mechanic. So he used to work at his shop, at his mechanic shop. He used to work in restaurants. He's driven taxis in in Canada. So he had a lot of different jobs when he was there, you know, as well as going to school. And he finally, you know, decided to apply to the University of Montana. And he's actually an engineering student there. And he met a mentor who coached him through and he changed to pharmacy. And that's, that's been his career. But learning from him, uh, learning from his experiences has been tremendous. And um, so he really brings that experience to explain hard labor, as we can call it, right? Going out there, working. And yeah, he pushed us in his in this direction so that way we won't have to go through some of the things that he's gone through and be able to help others as well as we go along. Through his experience, he always taught us you have to work hard no matter what. And that that is the ultimate thing. Success comes with hard work. Hey, are you enjoying this interview on Biz in the 916? 
support us on Patreon and help us develop more great interviews. Patreon supporters will get exclusive business content you can use today to help your career or business. Check us out at patreon.com slash biz in the 916. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash biz in the 916. And you'll help us continue to share business stories and insight. What are some challenges you've had to overcome in your business? Our greatest challenge, I think, was coming into a new industry, um, being inexperienced and underage. Uh, we did not have a background in finance or business when we started on this journey. It was, it was difficult to start this journey and become an entrepreneur and build a business for yourself when th that's not a background that you had originally. And there's probably a perception among some business people that how can you be young and know what you're doing and make good decisions? Yes, absolutely. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a question that always comes into play. And um, everything, there's an opportunity to learn. So that's what we've taken forward. Um, I worked with a broker early on, and I learned a lot from her. And working with that New York hedge fund, um, it taught me a lot about the industry that I knew absolutely nothing about, you know, and it, it paved the way to start this business. So leaning back to those experiences, and we still work very closely with them. That's how we show our experience now. Usually it's your personal fears that hold you back, especially when you're, you know, living here in the United States. That's true. Um, you can always find someone who's willing to place a bet and take a risk on you. You just have to be willing to bet on yourself. And just this past weekend, I was at a networking event in the Bay Area, and the goal of that event was to work with college students and high school students and have them interact with professional members of the community. And most of the individuals that I talked to, these young, you know, college graduates or stu high school students, they seemed to have um, this idea that they needed a lot of experience before they got into something. And I told them, baptism by fire, you got to do it. Go out there, try it do it. That's what we've been doing. Learn new things. And it, ta it takes you a lot of different places, opens up a lot of different avenues for you. Um, but you really have to be willing to believe in yourself and take that bet on yourself. I can do this. Yeah. It's, you learn quickly when you're taking risks because you need to be able to pivot quickly exactly. in order to keep going. Yeah, exactly. You have to be able to analyze that. What did I do here? What do I need to do going forward? You know? So, um, I think, I think that builds up your experience very, very quickly. Do you have a success story that you're proud of? Yeah, so we are very early in our careers, um, but I think our greatest success story is our latest project in Las Vegas. Currently, development is finishing on a Class A industrial building that we are co-invested in. Um, most people lack the network to get into these types of assets, and the family office that we are co-invested in has a big presence in the Sacramento area as well. The property will serve as a dual-use office and warehouse space, and it's right next to um, the very busy I-215, and that's the largest and most used freeway in the Las Vegas Valley. So we underwrote or expected the leases are going to come in around a dollar per square foot in our cynical underwriting. Um, instead, they're coming in at a dollar twenty-four to a dollar fifty per square foot. Nice. So our investors are happy as we are leasing faster than expected, and they have the comfort of knowing that these leases are long-term and with corporate tenants. Um, so that's something that we are very proud of. What are some of your personal professional goals for the next few years? So recently, um, we've had the opportunity to start looking at impact investing. Um, for example, that could be investing into companies, organizations, or funds that have the intention to generate a measurable, beneficial, uh, social, or environmental impact alongside a financial return. That is one thing that we would like to do more of in the future. What kinds of social causes uh, or environmental causes are you most interested in? Um, so right now what we're looking at is cancer. A lot of people are very highly affected. We have, all of us have known either a family or a friend who is affected by this. So that's one thing that we're working on right now. Um, 
I don't think I can say too much at this time, but that's something where we're passionate about. We've had family members affected. So, um, and my father has a medical background. Uh, he's a pharmacist and he's very, very interested in these types of things too. So, um, yeah, that's, that's something that we're, that we're working on right now. You're an active member of NABO, N-A-W-B-O, the National Association of Women Business Owners. How has your participation helped your career? Um, so, yeah, NABO is a great group of women. Um, they're a national association, and they have a local Sacramento chapter. And I had the pleasure of meeting many, many women who are business owners in that group. And, they, you know, they do a variety of different things, but I feel the most important thing is it's a place for women to really get together and discuss, you know, what the, what they're working on, business opportunities, the ups and downs of business. Um, you know, we recently had a conversation about being resilient and how we use that throughout our business practices. Um, cause you know, we all go through ups and downs and you have to be resilient through those. You got to figure out what you need to do and, and get that done. So it's a great group of women that you can, um, have these conversations with and uh, really just learn from them. You know, they're from different backgrounds, different careers, and it's, it's wonderful to uh, know them, network with them, and learn from them. Yeah, that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned in business is you have to be resilient because there are so many times when you hit bottom somewhere in your career or in your business, and if you don't keep pushing forward and stop doubting yourself or stop the, st the self-pity. You have to do that or you, you can't yeah. move forward. You have to remember that you bet on yourself. So, you know, keep, keep that going. Thank you for sharing your story, Preet. Thank you for having me, Kristen. It was a pleasure to be here. Listeners can learn more about GNP Capital Partners by going to gnpcapitalpartners.com. Preet is also on LinkedIn and they can connect with you there. Yes. And you can like GNP Capital Partners on Facebook for their latest news. What are some of the things that they'll find on the Facebook page? Um, so mainly it'll be, be industry news. Um, you know, we'll keep everyone updated on, on what's going on in the market. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of our listeners. I'm Kristen Berkery, and you can learn more about Biz in the 916 by visiting bizinthe916.com. You can support Biz in the 916 by becoming a sponsoring subscriber on Patreon, and soon we'll be launching exclusive useful business content for Patreon supporters, so don't miss out on even more from Biz in the 916. I invite you to join us in the lounge for the next Biz in the 916. Stay tuned for future episodes, where I'll be talking to more local entrepreneurs who have learned how to make the most of their small businesses. They'll share their wisdom and help you shorten your learning curve, so you can make your business more successful.